Hello everyone, Ford DIYers here, back with another tutorial video for everyone. Now in this particular video here I'll be doing a demonstration on how to do a load test on a 12 volt uh, car battery. Now the battery I'm using for this uh, this video here is uh, from my uh, 1997 BMW 540i. And uh, to do a load test, basically what this does is it determines if the uh, battery is sufficient to use in your vehicle or if it does need to be replaced. Now just before I get it into the video any further, I just want to uh, thank everybody again for uh, Reach, helping me reach the 5,000 subscribers mark. Uh, the next milestone, which I hope to reach, is 10,000 subscribers, and uh, hopefully I'll have uh, have something else together, maybe possibly a little contest for everybody. So uh, definitely stay tuned for that, and I will post that when it comes around. Now, normally you can go off to your local auto supplier or battery supplier store, even uh, even a local garage, and have them test the battery for you. But unfortunately, in the past, I have found uh, some of their equipment to be faulty. So this is why I have purchased my own battery tester right here. Now, these are fairly inexpensive to buy. Uh, this one here I did purchase from my local uh, uh, Princess Auto. Uh, the American equivalent to that would be Harbor Freight. Or you can even uh, purchase one of these at your local auto parts store. Now, this was originally $50, but I did purchase it on sale uh, for $25 plus tax. So it's a fairly inexpensive buy, and it's even a great tool to have. Now it doesn't only test uh, the load on a battery, but it also does other tests as well, uh, which I will get into further into other videos. Now we'll also be using a digital multimeter here, and that just for the specific purpose of showing if the uh, battery does have the sufficient voltage for it. Now you do want to make sure the battery is fully charged, and um, your load tester does have a voltage reading on it, so when you do hook it up, uh, to the battery itself, it will show uh, what the existing voltage is, but just the digital meter is a little more accurate with regards to that. Now to start off first, you want to make sure the battery isn't frozen. Uh, next, you also want to remove it from the vehicle. Now I normally recommend to do that, and there is a couple reasons for that. One being that you do have clamps that go on these posts here, uh, which the clamps from the battery tester themselves will have to go on the outside of that. So just to have a direct connection rather than going through a bunch of different connections where there could be a possible room for voltage drop, uh, just remove those. Next, um, if there is the chance that it ever does explode, now normally this is rare, but you always want to be safe with this, uh, you won't destroy your vehicle. Because if the acid does explode and go all over anything, there is a possible chance of fire and um, any uh, corrosion on any parts. Next, what I also re recommend you do is wear safety glasses for this and even gloves, um, just in case anything does happen. You always want to be safe, and uh, if anything does happen, it's always uh, too late after the fact, so just uh, extra precaution to go by. Now, when testing the battery here, you want to make sure the terminals are clean. Um, now, if they are a little corroded, you can use uh, just a baking soda and water mix, or you can go around with just a uh, soft wire brush or using a Scotch-Brite pad. Now, these are just made of lead, so they're usually fairly easy to clean up. This is a very soft material. Now the battery tester which I did purchase uh, will test the voltage on the battery which you are testing. Uh, but just to give you a more accurate reading here, I am using a digital multimeter and you want to make sure you do have it set on the DC voltage setting. And uh, just uh, going with the corresponding uh, negative and positive testers uh, onto the battery post. You can see the battery is at 13.01 volts. Now when you are testing the battery, if you do find your battery tester is warming up, that is perfectly normal. Uh, it basically works just on a resistor basis here. And uh, that is why they are um, regulated so you don't hold them any longer than 10 seconds. Now when you purchase one of these meters, now it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be set to zero here, the needle. So what you want to do here is there's a little small adjustment screw on the bottom here and this is to set it uh, to zero to move the needle back and forth. Now once you've done that, you can go and start with the test. As you can see, you hook the black to the negative terminal, which is uh, the negative symbol, or that is also known as the ground or earth. Then you want to take your red lead and hook it to the positive uh, part of the battery, which is listed by the positive symbol, or in red. Now next you can see here on the tester, you can see it's already started to test the voltage on. You can just see it's slightly over 13 volts, which was shown on the uh, multimeter, which is about 13.01 if I remember correctly. Now in order to do the load test here, basically what we have is a switch on the bottom here. Now the switch is a momentary switch, so you do have to hold it in position for it to work. And you can see there is already instructions on here, but this normally works with any type of tester such as this. Um, once you 
push the button to one side here, you want to hold it for no longer than 10 seconds, okay? But you also want to hold it for enough time until the needle goes down a certain amount and stays in that location, but no longer than 10 seconds. So just to show you what the test is here. And you can see, it only dropped to about, uh, I would say, 11.7. And even with this battery being an 800 uh, cranking amp, it's cold cranking amps, but still, even with the warm weather out here, you can see it does stay within that general area. Now, I, as I mentioned earlier, with regards to cold cranking amps, now basically, the definition for that is how much uh, current the battery can output at a temperature of zero degrees Fahrenheit or minus 18 degrees Celsius. Okay, so it's obviously a little different in this scenario. That is basically worst case scenario for a battery. Now in here, you can see there is a green bar here. So this is the cranking amperage of the battery itself. So in this green bar, we'll have uh, 1,000, 800, 600, and 400. You can see it does drop off. And once it goes into a yellow area, it is determined as the battery being weak itself. Now basically when it drops all the way down to the very bottom here, uh, the voltage which we'll be looking for for that is if it's any lower uh, than 9.6 volt, that means the battery is no good and it will need to be replaced. Now this concludes the rest of my tutorial video. If you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to post them. Also, please subscribe to my channel and like my video. Thank you.